Welcome to the Deepak Saini Show. This is a special podcast episode taken from my summit that I ran last year, a Reverse the Effects of Aging Summit. Do enjoy. Welcome back to the Reverse the Effects of Aging Summit. I am your host, Deepak Saini. I believe that a big part of healthy aging and reversing the effects of aging is knowing about cutting edge technologies and healing modalities. I'd like to introduce you to my guest today, Dr. Jeffrey Gross, aka the Stem Cell Whisperer. A polymath and great medical mind, by the time he had finished medical school, he was published multiple times in medical journals and had won prestigious research awards. Dr. Gross has always pursued a path to help patients avoid surgery. Focusing on neurosurgery and with a spine fellowship, he's one of the thought leaders in providing the best options and highest quality of care to his patients. There is no surprise that a number of years ago, out of frustration for patients wanting more options, he went back to his roots of basic science and retrained in regenerative and stem cell medicine. He studied the best practices from around the globe and is one of the few cutting edge scientists and doctors to offer alternatives to cortisone injections or surgeries. Jeffrey, thank you for joining us for Reverse the Effects of Aging Summit. Thank you so much for having me. It is absolutely my pleasure to be here. I, I'm so happy to have you. And we've had uh, many conversations before and uh, uh, we've recorded a podcast episode. It won't be out by the time people see this interview, but uh, there's a lot of great nuggets in that podcast episode as well. Let's start with what got you into, you know, I guess one, just pursuing, you know, uh, to become a doctor first off, and then what got you to sort of, you know, regenerative medicine and stem cells? Well, I suppose I'm uh, always the science nerd. So there, you know, you're either going into sort of the hard sciences, the, the math and physics and engineering, or, or you're going into the biosciences, generally speaking. And uh, I was just drawn uh, to biology, diversity, chasing animals as a kid around the house, you know, and outside and catching frogs and things. I just was so interested in, in all that, you know, biology was and, and all the cycles that go with that. So it was a foregone conclusion that I was going to be a doctor and pursued that uh, throughout my schooling. Okay. And then what got you to kind of then the focus on, you know, you started with, uh, you know, neurosurgery, focusing on the spine, and then, you know, I guess, I guess we kind of briefly touched on the bio, but then like how, what was really that transition point to get into you know, doing stem cells and regenerative medicine? Well, listen, I mean, I'm, I'm in my 25th year of practice and as a spine specialist, uh, I watched and learned, listened to my patients and learned from them. And, you know, there was a, a large gap between sort of the, the lesser treatments like therapy and uh, injections and then the more open invasive treatments like surgery. And that gap uh, became more and more apparent because we're catching problems earlier with MRIs and diagnostic injections. And, um, but that doesn't mean everyone's ready for surgery. Surgery is usually the last option unless there's some kind of emergency. So, and, and patients would come and ask me, hey, how about stem cells? And how about lasers and how about this and that and after listening to enough patients i i was also frustrated with them and instead of going back to the spine conferences every year and the neurosurgery conferences every year where things really don't change much i said you know i'm going to go and educate myself in stem cell medicine and regenerative medicine and i'm going to have better answers for my patient and not only now do i have better answers I have more tools for them that most of my colleagues haven't yet embraced. Okay. Yeah. And you're, you know, uh, at the leading at the forefront of that for sure. So how can, so we're about, you know, this is the reverse the effects of aging summit. So, you know, how can regenerative medicine, you know, help us reverse the age, you know, age reversal at the cellular level. So, uh, you know, as you study one aspect of regenerative medicine, as I, as I jumped into it, it really to address spine problems, uh, it, it became apparent that regenerative medicine is almost synonymous with anti-aging through a process of re reducing and reversing inflammatory pathways in the body. And although it sounds rather simplistic, inflammation really is this accumulation of degeneration of the cell and degeneration of the tissues and degeneration of the body measured as something we call aging. So anything we can do through mindfulness, diet, sleep, exercise, fasting, hormesis, uh, or, or even regenerative approaches 
to those things, like through the stem cell field, slows down and reverses inflammation and thereby reverses the age process. You speak a little more specifically. So, you know, I heard a lot of lifestyle factors in, in there in your answer, but, you know, you're known as the stem cell whisperer. So, you know, can you talk to maybe what that looks like or maybe how that's maybe not your first thing? I think lifestyle should be the first thing, but like, you know, if at that next level, either stem cells or, you know, exosomes for that matter. Right. So regenerative biologics, including stem cells and stem cells stimulating uh, nanoparticles such as exosomes, uh, are wonderful uh, ways to to add on to an optimized person. So optim optimization is lifestyle, supplements, diet, all the all those things which are, have a big impact. Uh, you know, all those things we learned from our grandmothers, right? Get your sleep, eat right. You know, um, if we followed that, we 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 live longer. So the the ability for us to actually give youthful activating biologics uh, is an additional tool. It's a medical tool, right? And this isn't something you necessarily can do on your own, like you can with exercise and diet. Got it. Got it. Okay. Mm. And, uh, and, you know, people may or may not have seen my post. I, I just, you know, a few weeks at the time of this recording, a few weeks back, I actually got the pleasure to meet you in person and, and visit your clinic and have an exosomes treatment. And I've shared about, uh, you know, what I experienced and I won't rehash it here for the audience, but what, what do you typically see with, you know, what comments are you getting back from your patients when they do uh, either exosomes and or stem cells? Uh, well, you, you know, we, we have two main categories of things we do here at Recelebrate and one, one would be the anti-aging biohacking uh, group. The other, the other would be specifically helping to address a problem like knee pain or something like that. Let's focus, uh, you know, to be germane with the summit here, you know, generally anti-aging and biohacking, which go hand in hand and overlap, you know, we usually approach that with IVs and our typical, uh, you know, pattern and, and um, a battery of things we hear about is improved energy, improved restorative sleep, uh, fewer aches and pains, um, improved cognition, mental clarity. Um, those are typical. Some people say I have improved my skin quality, my hair, uh, my nails grew faster, things like that. But uh, now we've had other people who've said, uh, hey, you know, I went to my kidney doctor and my labs are better or my, uh, my blood, I've been more insulin sensitive instead of resistant. Yeah, so whole, potentially a whole host of benefits and it's gonna be individualized. Uh, to the right. person. So I want to change tracks just a little bit here. Uh, you know, one thing that's sort of really grown or become more popular in the, let's call it the health optimization field. And I think, you know, reversing the effects of aging falls into that is some of these, you know, biological age tests that are out there, you know, that, you know, a few number of years ago, there's just a couple. Now that seems like there's a dozen or, or more, you know, what do they actually, maybe you could explain to the audience, what do they actually measure and maybe where are we at with the science at this point? No, that's, that's actually a good question. So um, there are many competitors in the space and there are two main types of tests. One uh, studies changes inside the cell and one studies changes outside the cell. As it turns out, when these are compared, they trend together. So that means right now, one isn't necessarily better than any other one. The ones that look inside the cell look at methylation of DNA, which is sort of, you know, some junk added onto your DNA, which can affect the genes that are being utilized. Uh, and it looks at telomere length and other markers of cells that have, have gone through many divisions, meaning older cells. In the bloodstream, uh, you know, uh, the extracellular markers are looking at uh, changes to antibodies, like the glycan age test. And this is uh, this is probably more sensitive tests, meaning you could make some lifestyle changes and hopefully see some changes in in that within weeks to months. Whereas the intracellular ones take much longer. So weeks to months, uh, how long the intracellular one like? Years, year, uh, probably yes. I mean, I mean, I I actually don't know the exact metric, but when you look at the the bloodstream changes, uh, the, it has been demonstrated those can be seen. Changes can be seen with lifestyle modification within six to eight weeks. Okay, 
Okay. So basically what I kind of, for the audience, regardless, there's a lot of competitors and there's basically two camps of how they're testing. But what I'm hearing you say is generally, whichever one you choose for whatever reason you might, uh, the consumer might choose one, generally the trend will tell you one way or another, are you making an improvement? Are you reversing the effects of aging or are you not? Correct. This, this isn't, uh, you know, it's not a, a hard and fast, your biological age is 29. It, what it's telling you is your markers that we're studying match with healthy 29 year olds. So that's kind of what it's doing. And, and your job, and this is a game, right? You have to gamify it. You have to say, okay, I'm, I'm 29 on this test. My goal is to go to 27 or, or as I age to stay at 29, you know, so and, and you can repeat these, you know, yearly or what have you, or induce a change in your life. Say, I'm going to work out every day for six months and then repeat the test and see what that's done for you. Measured in these markers give, give, gives you this biological age. It's a rough way to look at the inflammatory burden on your body and what you can do to modify that. So that's, you brought up an interesting point. So it's a rough way, but I would argue... I'd love to hear your thoughts compared to maybe where we were 10 years ago. It's better than what we had. So maybe it's still rough. The science is growing. It's getting better every day, but it's like way better than what we had 10 years ago. I totally agree with that. I, you know, you know, we have inflammatory markers, you know, we have C-reactive protein, homocysteine and others, and they can be useful as well because I, I do study those in people uh, periodically, but you know, the, these biological age tests are multiple markers or a, a broad spectrum of markers that that kind of get distilled down in, into an age estimate, a physiologic or biological age estimate compared to your calendar age. And, and we know this, right? You can look at two 80-year-olds and one is kind of youthful and active and one is sort of, you know, gray and in a, in a rocking chair. And they're the same age, but they're biologically very different. Right, right. I, I guess the last point before we, we move on is that, you know, I think these tests or tests like them is a good uh, data set, but you have to also pair it with maybe some more traditional labs. You know, like you said, C-reactive protein, you know, what your cholesterol, blood glucose, et cetera. Right. I agree. Okay. Very good. So what are some, what are some of the basic steps? Like maybe, you know, uh, not everyone can maybe has the means or the desire to do a stem cell treatment or exosomes or, or anything else like that. What are some basic steps that people can do to, you know, slowly, you know, through a lifestyle methodology, reverse their aging? Yeah. Listen, anti-aging is, is inexpensive and simple. Uh, you can, exercise every day. And that can include a walk after dinner and build that up to some resistance exercise because you want to maintain your muscle mass and your bone density. Those are the key uh, longevity organ system. And if you maintain your muscles, you maintain your bone and vice versa. So uh, secondly, uh, dietary considerations, uh, protein intake, you know, we don't get enough protein uh, generally, and we don't get good protein. And we all know to limit carbs. We used to think limiting fats was important, but if you focus on the protein, you'll get enough of the right fats with it generally. Um, if it's if it's good, you know, organic stuff. Um, and then <clears throat> phytonutrients and supplements, right? We just don't get the vitamins and supplements through our farmed, bleached out diets. You know, it's it's not all our fault. It's the source of food and and what's in the water and what all that. So. So we really need to supplement properly. And all that can be done very inexpensively. Right? You can order those or go to your local, you know, uh, discount store or vitamin store. And yeah, you can spend a lot on vitamins, but you can also not spend a lot and get what you need there. And then restorative sleep. And that that is conscious and, and willful. And you have to really focus on how well you sleep. Sleep is incredibly important to longevity. It is our chance to repair. Uh, it's like charging your phone. You have to charge it to use it the next day. So we need to do the same. And that means proper sleep, um, getting the brain in the right waveforms. There's a lot uh, we're learning about that. Fantastic. So I'd love to get your take on this, this angle of it. So, you know, I love what you just said there about, you know, these lifestyle factors. When someone comes to work with me, not necessarily my group coaching, but in my one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I look at, 
seven big buckets. And the last bucket is, you know, kind of where, you, you know, your realm with, you know, uh, regenerative medicine and, you know, advanced uh, techniques or cutting edge techniques, et cetera. And then I agree hundred percent, you know, sleep, nutrition, proper supplementation, exercise, et cetera. What about, you know, I, I, I think it's also important, like, you know, the mindset and having gratitude and, you know, uh, quieting the mind, maybe meditation, maybe breath work, some of these other things. What's, what's your thoughts on those as part of the whole package? Yeah. I, and you're, you're right there. And, um, this is probably like a second level we're talking about here. And, you know, this takes me full circle to my neuroscience training, uh, back to it, because what we're talking about here is tapping into the healing benefits, uh, and restorative benefits of certain neurotransmitters, oxytocin and, um, you know, dopamine and how to properly get the balances and the waves and the, and the rhythms of these things. For example, there are, you know, gratitude makes us feel good or intimacy, which is known to be associated with longevity, helps us release oxytocin and dopamine and endorphins. And these are, you know, healthy molecules for longevity. So it helps the brain re uh, release what's called BDNF, brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is a known uh, stimulator of genes to produce proteins that help repair our nervous system and probably our other parts of our bodies. So, so gratitude, happiness, mindfulness, peace, mental peace is so important. And we're learning about how to get there and how to biohack our way to a, a getting that in a stressful world. There's too much information, too much to do, too much we want to do, and it's it's stressful. And then the brain has neurostress. So we really need to work against that. I agree with you. Uh, I'm glad you brought up BDNF. So besides those factors you just mentioned, there's other ways to help boost your BDNF exercise and some others, right? Am I not mistaken? Correct. Exercise and hormesis, which we really didn't get too much into, but as, as you and your audience, I'm sure know, hormesis is a slight stress on the body that builds cellular resilience so that we can weather aging uh, slower and easier. For example, uh, exercise is, uh, is one intermittent fasting. So you're, you know, you're a little bit of starvation there, right? It stimulates release of, of certain survival proteins, um, uh, hot, uh, spa. So sauna, um, you know, the Finns have wonderful data on this, uh, uh, you can follow and they release what's called heat shock proteins. We, we, our cells make those and they're very primitive, but survival proteins. And also cold plunge, uh, you know, it's a, you, we, we release cold survival type proteins. So your cells do what they need to do to survive. And during that, they cleanse out to their, the best of their ability, the senescent zombie cells, because they're taking up time, space and resource. And they recycle the components and they, cause division and a st stem cell activity to replenish um, some youthful active cells that we need. Got it. The other thing when you brought up BDNF uh, reminded me of a conversation we had previous before, you know, before our recording here in the summit um, about just going back to the exosomes and some maybe anecdotal at this point of like uh, helping with cognitive decline and that sort of thing. If you, could you touch on, on, on that in, in, in the proper context? Yes. So the, the brain is sensitive to um, environmental and age-related inflammatory stresses. Alzheimer's disease, which affects cognition and memory, uh, is has an inflammatory reaction to these misfolded proteins. Uh, many neurodegenerative problems have an inflammatory component. MS has an inflammatory component. So you see, you see the theme here. The diseases of age are also the diseases of inflammation and vice right. versa. So BDNF is a powerful brain anti-inflammatory. It stimulates new brain and, and axonal and nerve growth. It stimulates um, you know, uh, stem cells in the nervous system. It stimulates um, you know, the cleansing out of uh, cells that aren't doing their work, the sort of senescent cells um, that support uh, and surround brain cells called glial cells. Right. So, yeah, so basically everything, you know, for the, for the audience there, all these lifestyle factors, layering in some layer two, layer three, you know, modalities, 
is going to help with inflammation generally. And then these are all the things that cause uh, aging or all the diseases we associate with aging. Like Dr. Gross said, is just uh, you know, really just boils down to inflammation, just where in the body, uh, essentially. Is that, did I sum that up <laughs> good for you? Perfect. Awesome. Um, so we start to uh, wrap up here, uh, Jeffrey. Um, you know, outside of the things that you do in your own practice, right? Stem cells, exosomes, that sort of thing. Um, I'm sure it's some of the things you've already talked about, but what are some, like maybe your top one, your top two things you personally do outside of stem cells and exosomes to reverse the effects of aging? So I, I'm a I'm a big fan of intermittent feeding or intermittent fasting. I don't like to call it intermittent fasting, even though we all speak that language because I'm really not fasting. I am, I'm, I'm taking advantage of circadian rhythms and metabolism. And it's very easy, you know, thing to get started on in your biohacking or anti-aging journey is you simply don't eat when it's dark. Um, so I am pretty regimented. Um, now I go a little bit more. I don't eat until 1130 in the morning. That's my first calorie. Yes, I may have some black coffee in the morning, but that has no calories and uh, although some people think it may stimulate somewhat the metabolism, um, it, it, I need the nootropic benefits and the sure. phytochemical benefits. So, so um, do I, so do I. Right, and, we, and I know that about myself and many people do, and that's okay. We need to work within what you know about your body too. When we, when we fashion a, a precision and custom biohacking plan or anti-aging plan for someone so I'm I'm a big intermittent faster. My my trouble spot is is after 6 p.m. because um, I, I keep going. I'm still working. I'm still doing emails. But you know, you're a busy person. You you know how it is. Everyone's like this. I I need to avoid that that snack later at eight o'clock. Uh, that's that's my trouble spot. So I'm not perfect, and no one is. And and, and you know, we try to do this the best we can. I'd say the second thing I have been really good at is an evening walk after my last meal. So uh, I think that is is big, uh, although that by itself is not enough exercise for someone of my age. Uh, it does help get your metabolism flipped into the dark phase, the night phase, the hibernation, the human hibernation at night, and the restorative reparative phase at night. And I pair that with melatonin, not because I have trouble sleeping, but because melatonin does help stimulate cellular repair during the circadian rhythm of the dark phase. So um, DNA repair, um, mitochondrial support. And if I sleep, I want to repair everything. So you brought up something interesting. I know I said that was going to be the last question, but <laughs> now you made me think of something else. So when we are traveling or when someone is traveling, you know, going over multiple time zones, let's call it North America to Asia or to Australia or something like or vice versa type of thing where we're really, really changing our circadian rhythm. Do you feel melatonin in some role would be a part of that recovery or being able to hack the, the travel, so to speak? Yeah. I mean, that this is, this is not news. This is a, a well-known uh, travel trick or trip tip or both. And, and you, you know, you try to figure out when you should be going to bed at your new destination and uh, try to just stay up and then take that melatonin. You can even take a little extra melatonin and then you'll sleep. And that should help you get on that new time zone uh, easier or biologically. And then you can adjust to that once you're, it's the biological adjustment. That's the hard part. We right. can all change the, you can change your watch, right? Yeah. In fact, these days changes for you. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, very, very good. I think that's something I'm, I'm glad we brought that up. That's uh, that, uh, that is something I'd heard for a while, but maybe, maybe many people of our audience haven't heard that before. Uh, so Jeffrey, you have a, a gift for all the audiences uh, and, and I'll just mention, you know, Dr. Gross is all his links and uh, to his social and how you can connect with him and to his, uh, his practice uh, in Las Vegas and, and as well as this gift, all the links will be underneath uh, this interview. Uh, but you have this uh, free resource. Uh, again, we'll have the link here. Uh, Young again, method forward slash longevity. Could you briefly describe to the audience what this, uh, what this is? Well, that, that is uh, just uh, some basic uh, starter supplements to help uh, support your initial 
inexpensive journey towards anti-aging. And it's, it's uh, just a free start. And we put out a lot of free tips on our Young Again or Get Young Again channel. And um, there'll be some upcoming uh, exciting news there. So sign up and stay tuned. All right. So everyone, definitely check it out. If you're not already taking supplements, or maybe if you are, you want to see if you're the ones you are taking are optimizing your health for longevity, check out those resources. And yeah, sign up and get keep up to date with the, you know, a, a leader uh, in, in the regenerative medicine space and what's uh, up and coming. And I'm certainly, you know, uh, we'll, I'm going to do the same as well. And I just want to remind everyone, if you enjoyed this uh, uh, conversation with Dr. Uh, Gross uh, and want to, you know, keep it for forever so you can reference back to it, as well as all our other speakers, don't forget to uh, sign up for the VIP package, just $97 during the summit. Afterwards, it will be going up so you can, you know, uh, uh, keep, keep it all along, plus all the bonuses you get, including the transcripts. And also don't forget to uh, check out our, uh, our sponsors who've made this a free event uh, for all of you uh, to attend, companies like STEM Regen and HBOT USA. Uh, thank you again, Jeffrey. Is there any one last golden nugget you'd like to leave the audience with before we sign off? Yeah, simple tip. The, the best thing you can do right now, no cost, is to exercise every day. That will keep your cognition, cognition safe. It'll help you add years to your life by maintaining your muscle mass. It's easy to do. Start out with a walk every day. Absolutely. I love that. I love it. Thank you, uh, Jeffrey, for, for being part of it. And everyone, thank you for uh, for tuning into this interview of uh, at the Reverse the Effects of Aging Summit, and I'll see you all in the next interview. This episode is brought to you by by Optimizers Magnesium Breakthrough. This is a product I've been using with, and our family's been using for gosh, four years already. What I love about it, it has seven different forms of magnesium in it, all the forms that your body needs for all 400 processes that your body needs magnesium for. Most magnesium supplements have one form and usually a crummy form of magnesium. This has all seven forms that your body needs. So check, click the link and get at least 10% off. Sometimes uh, they're specials and you even get more. So check out Bioptimizer's Magnesium Breakthrough. Podcast produced by the Minted Green Company 